you shouldn't be worrying about uh, have I got uh, the skill set that I need to understand the ins and outs of all this different technology we're about to get into? No, you don't. Uh, you leave it to the experts. Experience goes a long way. Uh, you want to fix a problem, tell us what the problem is. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we've got the tools in our kit bag, our collective kit bag, to actually resolve whatever the problem is. That is probably our biggest problem when I talk about the ecosystem. Our biggest problem is understanding what is your problem. Tell us what your problem statement is and we can actually work backwards. Whether you're in the health sector, uh, whether you're working at ports, whether you're working in a, a building, in manufacturing, tell us what your problems are and we'll work with you to actually find the right solution. And don't worry about the back office stuff. Don't worry about if it's IoT or blockchain. This, blockchain. We can get into that. What we are about is... Uh, I don't know which way we go. So first of all, this is, um, we talk about a lot of SRO, SRO ecosystem. It's not an SRO ecosystem. If it's Dave Lister, uh, who works for AI Connect, if you stood in, he'd be talking about the AI Connect ecosystem. If it was Richard, he'd be talking about the uh, site, desk, site desk ecosystem. So it depends on who's standing before the crowd. So it is an ecosystem of partners. What's good about this ecosystem of partners that we brought together, they cover not only lots of different technologies, and skill sets, but it's the size of the organizations as well. So you've got sub five million uh, pound organizations in there, and you've got some of the big boys, I think Arrow probably the biggest ones, I don't know, you're about $30 billion or something, Arrow, but you've got a mix of big boys, and you've got a mix of sub five million, etc. What I like is coming from SRO, who is around uh, about 10 million pound turnover for SRO, give you an idea is the enthusiasm I get from the Mercateos, which is Europe's uh, biggest B2B e-commerce platform, their enthusiasm to actually work with this ecosystem of partners. There's a good balance of ecosystem partners in terms of sizing, uh, in terms of different technologies, and what's really important is we've got academic rigor attached to it as well. So, secondly, thank you very much for this opportunity. I should have started with that, shouldn't I? Thank you very much for this opportunity, chaps. Uh, did you see the fight breaking out on Table 5 last night when we won the uh, uh, Rice Awards? It was, uh, everybody wanted a photo with it. So it is, it's powerful, it's useful, we find it, we appreciate it. Uh, so uh, thanks very much for the opportunity. Right, moving on. If I can manage to press the right button here. Just leave it with us. Don't worry about your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it with us. <laughs> right, so I don't get them anywhere. Silos, whether it be technology silos, um, don't touch on it, whether it be technology silos, whether it be departmental uh, silos, this is what we are about. Uh, our collective, we get rid of those silos. Um, interoperability is going to create problems for you. So whether it's, I don't want to get technical, but whether it be the IoT side, talking to your asset management side, talking to your BIM and 3D and the blockchain, etc. You can't build these things in isolation. I come across, we can collectively come across a lot of organizations that are out there that are doing an IoT project over here. They're doing a blockchain project over there. They're doing 3D BIM stuff over there, etc. And we look at them and say, that's great, guys. How do they talk to each other? They don't. More often than not, yeah, it's uh, there's very few that do. So we are about removing those technology silos. The other thing, because it's end to end, we're removing those silos of you're not part of the blue team. Uh, this is the worst one we come across. Tell you the truth, it's commercial boys are working on a project involving blockchain now, and they don't want anybody else touching it. You've got the finance boys working on another IoT technology, and they don't want anybody else touching it. We we need. And this is what we do. We need to overcome those different barriers, those different silos, and say, right, this is not an IoT project for the operations team. We're thinking about that end-to-end -end process. We're thinking about those business outcomes that's going to go across not only your operations team, but it's also going to impact your finance team. It's going to impact your, your commercial team. So what we do is we move away from selling IoT to the ops team, for example, and we're attacking more at CEO level yeah, or CFO level. And because the impacts of what we're doing are, are that fast. <clears throat> so it's all about removing silos. This is a bugbear of mine. So um, I, I get what we were talking about yesterday and today, etc. We talk about uh, the uh, building, uh, uh, sorry, the asset life cycle. And in, in the building game, 
it's design and build, yeah, very good, uh, really important. But 8%, roughly 8% of the total cost of ownership is in the MRO space, how you maintain, repair, and operate those assets. So if I'm talking about if an asset is a building, yeah, you build it, yeah, you also you design it first, then you build it. But if that building's going to be around for the next 50 years or so, that's where all the costs are. So that's where the money is. So that's where our collective focus is. When we talk about uh, the operating space, these are the bits that are in our value proposition. So yeah, you've got design and build, but we're also looking at, and we'll see, what we're doing with supply chain, what we're doing with contracts and uh, SLA management, compliance, energy sustainability, and big data insights as well is, is, is an important one for us. And we take those insights and feed it back into the design and build phase. Yeah? So it's not I design it, build it, I bugger off, uh, leave it 50 years and do something else. And during that MRO phase, we take that valuable insight and we try and introduce the continuous improvement into either refurbs or the next design and build phase. We do that, sorry, that's an important point as well. At the top there, you see transactional and operational data. What I mean by that is, that's, that's a collective term that we use uh, amongst a number of system partners. Operational data is the IoT data. So how many people have actually s s sat here today? Uh, that, that is live operational data. You can have PIR sensors, you can have sensors under the desk to see who's there. That's real data, operational data. The transactional data, we call, it's how many people have actually booked in. So you, there is some system somewhere that says that today's attendees is, is 100 or whatever. That's the transactional data. What we want to get to, and this is why we're working with, with Leeds and, and Dublin, uh, we're working with Gary, who you'll hear from later on, we mix that operational data with transactional data yeah, to, to improve uh, or to ensure that continuous improvement back into the exam build phase. Okay, that's good for you. Uh, just out of interest, does everyone get a copy of these slides afterwards? Mm -hmm. Again, okay. okay. So I'm getting into a bit more detail. So what, what are we about? The collective ecosystem, what are we about? We've got IoT experts, we've got asset management experts, we've got supply chain experts, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're all in there. We look at that as a modular, that can, what we have there can be modular, it can be tailored, and it can be scalable. And we can just feed it into, I say, an innovation platform, but it's, it's just innovation. So we can sit down with the customer and we say, Justin, what are your problems? Not personal problems, but what are your problems? For you? <laughs> you can say, oh, well, I've got a headache, my business outcomes is X, Y, Z. Listening to what Justin's problems are, business problems are, in X, Y, Z, we can say, okay, what you should need is you need some IoT, you may need some BIM stuff or 3D modeling stuff, you could do some insights along the way, and you can do with blockchain. Justin said, yeah, but I haven't got a million pounds to spend on that. Uh, I haven't got all that money to actually spend on that, so what we will do is actually not only modular, modularize it, we can start with some IoT, get that off the ground, see what it's like, then we can introduce some asset management, where we feel in a bit safer, then we can introduce some supply chain stuff, if you want, we can skip the insights and jump straight to blockchain if you want to do it. So all that, at the top level, by working together, it's modular, it's scalable, and it's interoperable. And it's interoperable, that is very important. What you don't want is getting on a journey, Start doing some IoT stuff and realise at the end, in two, two years' time, you want to do some blockchain, but none of, the, none of this is joined up. Yeah? And a lot of organisations do that. They have, like I say, not only POCs, but proof of concepts or proof of values that are taking in IoT space, for example, that they'll get off the ground, it happily works, and then they realise six months later that it doesn't deliver any big data insights for them. I think we heard an example earlier on about that in construction. Our motto, what we say is, think big, you can do all sorts, you can be massive. Start small, uh, this is one of the problems that came out, why don't people innovate? It's because they're scared stiff of actually spending lots and lots of money and getting, I think it was the fear factor was at the end, uh, don't want to get shot for it, or somebody says I'll just sack the whole team, do you remember the, the, the slide earlier on? So what we say is think big, start small, uh, and we'll scale fast. Yeah, that is our approach. And we can only do that, with all this different technology by working with the right partners. These partners here are not only very good at what they do, and I'm very proud to work with them, different sizes, etc., uh, but they're also uh, complementary. That is so important. So you've got nobody in this space that's going to have a fight with the guy next to him, that's, apart from when there's a trophy involved uh, and an order, but apart from that, there is nobody steps on each other's toes here. Everybody brings something to the party. So it's that complementary ecosystem of partners that is part of it. Next one. 
That's a different way of drawing it. I say it's just like uh, pieces of a puzzle or Lego blocks. Um, because it's me today, uh, um, I'm specialised in asset management in SRO. I put that as a central piece. <laughs> Sorry, that's. Uh, but uh, whether it be IoT or BIM or whatever, you can plug these things in. So if you want to start with IoT, do it, BIM, etc. You can get the gist, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. And that's what we're trying to deliver operational excellence, spark building, and feeding that back into a continuous cycle. What's it all about then? So end to end joined up modular scalable smart asset management solutions. So down here, what is an asset? An asset, Chris touched on it, an asset can be a building, it can be a motor, it can be a fan, it can be a lift, it can be a person, it can be what the hell you want that asset to be. It's something that is of value to your organization. That is an asset, something that you spend money on. Something that if it went wrong, you'll get earache about it. They are your assets. So we can take those assets and convert them from, you know, whether it's on your uh, board or your own, uh, from dumb assets, which most are today, and transform them into smart assets. And so that's where Mr. Lister and the Arrow guys and the AIC guys come into it. I don't care what you want to smart up, or they don't care what you want to smart up. They've got sensors coming out their ears, and they can sense something, whether it be vibration, whether it be CO2, whether it be leakage, uh, lux. It's just, it's massive. Oh, the opportunity in the IoT space. So we can take either retrofit, we can take dumb assets and convert them into smart assets. We take the data out, and as the next step, we can actually, if you want to start small, we can pump that into the information into a simple dashboard. Dashboard will be on the phone or will be on the PC. That dashboard can be simply sending an email out, or it can be some kind of control center where you can actually take measures, look at trends, and give you an indicator of is, is it working or not. That's great. These are great if you've got one or two assets that you want to monitor. But if you've got hundreds of assets that you want to monitor, at some point, at some point in that journey, you will need a proper grown-up asset management solution. When we talk about asset management solution, CAFM Solutions is an asset management solution. Enterprise EAMs, Enterprise Asset Management, is, is an asset management solution. Uh, CMMS, Computer Maintenance Management Systems, it's, it's written on there. They're, for me, they're just asset management solutions. What an asset management solution, and why I draw it for uh, on the previous slide, you know, on the pieces of the puzzle, is because asset management can actually take that data from your different assets. It can give you a control board. It can give you a, a control center, I should say. Look and get your connected assets and your non-connected assets. So not everything has to be iot on day one. Dumb assets can remain uh, dumb for whatever. Uh, so you need a control you should have a control center that looks at, that manages all your assets in a building, in a port, in a hospital, etc. Those assets, they're going to have work orders outstanding on them. So an asset, if it goes belly up, if something goes wrong, you need uh, work order management. Who's going out to actually fix that job? So your asset, your grown-up asset management solution should have work order management as part of it. You should be able to take care of compliance as part of that asset management solution. Sending, making sure health and safety regulations are, 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 are respected. You'll have some contract management in there because you're not managing everything yourself, you're working with third parties. So it should be able to do contract management as well. It should integrate on the BIM stuff. You've got Jim talking later on, uh, he'll tell you a bit about, and, and Richard, I should say, uh, they'll tell you a bit about on the uh, BIM and 3D stuff. It should be able to make sure that you're intervening, your maintenance team, whether it be third parties or your internal teams, are actually intervening and respecting the SLAs, etc. You should be able to order your spare parts through it. You should be able to do your inventory management through it. So that asset management solution, these are good. If you've got one or two, if you've got hundreds, if you've got tens of thousands, if you've got millions of assets, we're talking to somebody who's got 2.5 million assets, Rich. Yeah, they need a proper grown-up asset management solution. With all that data coming off these different assets, it doesn't have to go here, you can actually take all that data and push it up into big data. Big data will just take different sources. I don't know, I've got a, I've got a big engine that, that's running. I want to take temperature. I want to take vibration information. I want to see the trains. I want to put some artificial intelligence in there. And ultimately, I want this, this system, this big data, to tell me when to intervene, excuse me, when to intervene before it fails. Predictive, preventive maintenance, which was talking about. Once you say, I'm about to fail, ideally you need to pump that information back into your asset management solution that says, Fred, go intervene on that engine over there because it's about to fail. And then from that point, you can all your spare parts, etc. That, that's basically the end-to-end -end of, of, of what we have to offer. 
these folks here, right, these guys are going to come up with some use case stories. So I'm going to blitz through this. David is going to talk about some IoT stuff. Um, if you want, you'll get a copy of the pack afterwards, so that's just a reminder in terms of what IoT can offer uh, your organizations, your establishments, uh, and who's actually looking at yeah? This is about IBM SRO solutions. I've touched on asset management. That's just a nice reminder for you in terms of what asset management can, uh, can deliver your organizations. Again, the big data stuff. You, so you've got the partners who support us at the top as well. So we're working with Chris. Uh, we're working with uh, Gary. And we've just done, we've had a number of conversations. We'll be doing something with Dublin in that space as well. We want to take information that's coming off customers' assets and we, work, we want to work with you guys in actually doing something clever with that data and uh, ultimately to probably push it into an asset management solution. And there's just some words around what that is. That's an important one for me, the procurement stuff. So, uh, Mercateo, they aren't here today. Um, Sai, who is the UK Managing Director for Mercateo UK and Ireland, uh, he's in Vienna. Uh, he's on a jolly by the sounds of it. Uh, don't send him a set down. Um, this is the process we see a lot of. That's the before image. The before image is, here's Fred, he's got an asset, and the asset's just gone belly up. Fred is thinking, oh my god, to fix that particular asset, I need, my priority is, it's urgent. I've got to have this part, because that's a really important asset. He's thinking, it's urgent. I've got to have a genuine part for that, because if I put a Siemens product into a Schneider device, uh, they ain't going to like it. He's got some ideas, etc. So on this column here, or to, that, that's his criteria. What happens more often than not, he will come up with a purchase request, he'll throw it over the wall to his purchasing team, and his purchasing team, don't give a f monkeys, sorry, uh, <laughs> nearly slipped up there, but... Uh, 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 nearly slipped up there, but... The purchasing team, they've got a different set of criteria that they're working with, it's not priority, they don't give monkeys about whether it's urgent or not. They're thinking their first priority is the price of it, because that's what they get paid on. Yeah? So, um, here's the, uh, the request for go over the wall through the question team. They'll go off, they'll eventually buy something, more often, I say more often not, a lot of the time, uh, the wrong product with the wrong price, with the wrong lead time, etc. Because that process is just lousy. What we want to get to is, Using their asset management, using APIs, using IoTs, forget the picture at the minute. The process that we want to get to is something is about to go belly up, that strong light, that, that overhead projector here. That's about to go belly up because it's been overheating, because vibration is saying, whatever. So we know it's about to fail based on the, the, the information we're getting off it. Because we know it's going to fail, we want to check IoT checks the asset management solution, have I got spare light bulb? Because chances are, it's about to fail. It's coming to end of life. It's been running 9,000 hours or whatever it is. No, I haven't. You can order that process. You can order it from the Mercateo platform, who have got 150 million types of products. That could be pre-configured up front. So based on the signals we're getting from a particular device, or the number of working hours that it's been running, etc., we could, the first thing that Fred will know about it, he will have a box on his desk that says, He'll open it up, he'll get the dispatch note out, he'll have a work number attached to it to say, Fred, go and fix that, check, go and change that light bulb because it's about to change. The advantages of that, he's got just in, that's just in time and country. Yeah? So that's a, that's a massive saving. Sorry? Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, that's a massive saving. So just in time and country, um, it's, um, yeah, uh, I'm working with the Mercatail platform. You're no longer messing around with procurement departments. I've got nothing against, I used to work in IT. Still working on it to an extent, um, but uh, I like the pushing department because they were the more more hated than the IT department. So uh, because they kept coming back with the wrong components, etc. So, but with that particular process, there you don't need a huge purchasing department. Uh, all that uh, can be automated. That's some of the words uh, attached to it. Then showing the right products. These guys are going to show you a video uh, of a use case, and they can present that much better than me, but again, you'll have a copy of that pack that shows the simple wording. So, if we start putting, I know you come to an end, if we start putting all these pieces of the puzzle together, what does it get us? We can convert dumb assets to smart assets. We've got work order task planning, based on either IoT information com uh, coming out, or plan schedule maintenance. 
we can actually have a 2D model image in, in, in Bing or a scan model <coughs> that can be flashing. You can see it in the video in a second. You can click on that information because something's gone belly up in that room there. I can click on the asset. The asset is telling me whatever the signal is. I can also can tell me what the likely cause of the problem is as well. From there, I can actually intervene. I can send the right person, the right qualified person, to go and fix the job. I'm only sending the Corgi engineer to go and fix a, a Corgi ball at Boiler, for example. So I've got HMS, I'm sorry, health and safety, uh, PPE instructions, maintenance history, I've got all that's part of my asset management solution. Mixing it with BIM and mixing it with IoT. If I need to order parts, that particular fan belt, I'm ordering it with the right criticality. I'm ordering the right parts, uh, the right lead time, at the right price. I'm measuring uh, the time of my intervention as well. From that, I'm ensuring that the contract and SLAs are, are respected. And I'm taking that information and I'm feeding it back into the process uh, to ensure continuous improvement. Where blockchain comes into it, blockchain was mentioned earlier on. Don't, don't worry too much about blockchain, what is it? Basically, uh, this ledger, this shared ledger, this information where we can actually, um, that can be shared transparently, it's immutable uh, between the customer and third parties. It does not be one third party, it can be several third parties. But basically, what we're saying is, what we're capable of doing is every event on that path, on that journey, can be written to a shared ledger. So you will have, I'm about to go belly up, write it to the ledger. Uh, the answers, the amps are showing this, the vibration is showing that, right into the ledger. I sent Jim, who is qualified, I write to the ledger. Uh, I didn't have the right parts, so I've ordered a new one, I write it to the ledger, etc., etc. So everything is written to the ledger. Why is that powerful afterwards? Because when it comes to third parties intervening, I can say, ISS, I don't know who maintains, maintains the building, ISS perhaps, or, or somebody else, I can actually say, well, hang on, you're not delivering to your, you're not respecting your SLAs. Because our shared data, you've got a copy, I've got a copy, it said it went belly up at 12 o'clock, you're supposed to be intervening with 24 hours, you didn't. And so, yeah, it's shared and useful data. You can use it, Chris touched on it as well, we're talking with insurance companies, they like that because they're saying, hang on, that ship sank at sea and there was lots of oil spillage and, uh, and whatnot. What was the problem? Because you've written everything to that ledger, you've got this immutable traceability of what the hell happened. And it could have been, uh, I don't know, a work order outstanding or badly done. You could have sent the wrong engineer, etc. So the insurance guys, they love it as well. Yeah, this notion of, of block they love the notion of blockchain. But somebody else was talking earlier on. Uh, they have, they, they won't dive into it. They're still in that position of, well, yeah, uh, maybe next year. Yeah, I like the idea, get the concept, but but they're not ready just yet. We've got a couple of POCs, uh, and we've, we're talking to several organisations about it. But blockchain is one of those that's probably another 12 to 18 months off. But just to know that, we can do it. And if you get on that original journey I was talking about, whether you do IoT and you do procurement and you go into 3D and you go into blockchain, whatever we do here, you know it's going to be interoperable and compatible down here somewhere. You're not going to be working on a project in isolation. Whatever we do, we make sure it's part of a joined up uh, set of uh, services and solutions. And as we finished, that's just a reminder for you guys. From that point, I probably, we're probably waiting, not because of me, because these guys went on a bit. So we're going to go into some uh, use cases. Yeah, Jim? I don't think that should be.